So, I am going to talk to you about Open Harbor. I'm Eric. This is Gordo. Yeah. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about open hardware and uh, open source business models. Uh, so, most of you guys have heard this presentation before, mainly because it's almost identical to Khan's comp, uh, presentation. Uh, there isn't much difference between open hardware and open software. So, I'm going to keep the presentation brief. Uh, so, you can find uh, basically like the definition of open hardware and um, all the proponents in it at uh, oshawa.org. They're kind of like the equivalent to OSI, which Colin was talking about. So, there are 12 points to open hardware. Uh, the first one is documentation. Uh, basically, whenever you make a design, uh, you have to release all the documentation in order to recreate it. So, for example, if you make a circuit board, and that circuit board is going to be uh, made, uh, it's going to be on a, PS a PCB. Uh, you can't like release a PDF of that. Like, you can't just uh, say like what the circuit is. You have to release everything in order to be able to edit that and uh, be able to like send it to a manufacturer to like get it recreated. So, all the documentation in order to like remake what you did has to be there. Uh, this includes, uh, okay, well, I'll talk about that later. That later. Uh, the scope you have to, in the license, you have to uh, designate what part of your project is open source uh, because you can have like a closed source project and then open source like some of it, if that makes sense. Uh, all the necessary software has to be open source and approved under an OSI license that Colin was talking about a few weeks ago. So that one is pretty much straightforward. All the software for your embedded design needs to be open source, which is cool because after like programmable, lo programmable logic devices were made, like basically your open hardware could be in the form of open source because you just release your Verilog code or your VHDL code, which is kind of cool. Uh, all the derived works need to be under the same uh, open source license that you release it under. Uh, free redistribution, uh, self-explanatory. Uh, attribution. So if uh, someone creates a derived work of uh, the thing you made, they have to basically list, uh, give attribution to the original licensor. Yes? Uh, I think like two slides back you just uh, glossed over something that um, might seem a bit significant. Does this require like a mechanism similar to CopyLab? Uh, that all, everything under the same the same open source license or just that people are uh, allowed to release modifications? Uh, not necessarily under the same license. It depends on the licensing scheme of the person who created the open source hardware design. Um, okay. There are, and Eric's going to talk about this in a minute, there are possibilities for dual licensing. For instance, you can have a completely open source license that a corporation might want to use in a design, and in which case um, the person who created the design might dual license it open source and also a separate license specifically for that corporation. So, so the the common practice is to have uh, a copyleft style license and then separately sell uh, um, proprietary licenses rather than using yeah. uh, an MIT or BST style license? Yeah, and that's not, uh, not to be confused with, uh, I don't want to say selling out, but it's not, it's not selling the license so much as it is providing a second license that's more amenable for corporate use. Mm -hmm. Um, rather than something like copyleft, which is often hard to integrate into a corporate project structure. Okay. Uh, so, same thing as open software, you can't discriminate against groups. So, like, the NSA has to be able to use your stuff. Sorry. Uh, no discrimination against fields, so the military has to be able to, like, use it. Same thing. Uh, distribution of license. Uh, whenever it's redistributed, uh, the same license still applies. And uh, the product must not be specific to, uh, the, the license must not be specific to a product. Uh, so like if you're making this like Bluetooth module, you can't say, well, you can only use it with Arduinos. It has to be like free to use for anything. And uh, this is kind of like the complement to that. License must not restrict other hardware. So you can't say like, I made this Bluetooth module, but you can't use it with Arduinos. So like, same thing. Um, license must be technology neutral. That's kind of uh, similar to the other one. Uh, yeah, you can't have like this Bluetooth module and say you need an Arduino to use it. Uh, Similarly, you can't have a design that uh, if you have a circuit board that uses a very fancy, I'll just use resistor as an example, a very specific resistor. Yeah. You can't dictate that the design must use that resistor every time just by the nature of open source. That's sort of intuitive, but not always obvious. Uh, 
Yes. Okay. Again, uh, back, can you go back to the slide? Two. Uh, um, the I, way I typically see that phrasing used, it was re was referred to uh, the license is not being uh, specifically, the, this is a license for this product. It's This is uh, a license which um, could, could be applied to any uh, product uh, and that is being applied to this. So that, um, that the GPL isn't uh, a license specific specific to the community operating system, uh, but that it, it's, uh, the license doesn't mention uh, the new project specifically. Um, it, is that? Both of, both of the interpretations that the one that the one that you're offering and the one that Eric offered are both correct. Okay. Um, I mean, there's it's it's simply that they're two different two different things. Um, this um, I, I'm not a I'm not a copyright attorney or, or anything like that. But my um, my interpretation of, of this point specifically, what you said is absolutely correct. But this slide is, in my opinion, referring to um, you can't say. This Bluetooth module is open source only in the context of this smartphone, okay. or something like that. Like so this Bluetooth module is open source, but don't use it in any other smartphones. That's okay. not. That's not allowed. That, that's not covered by one of the next bits. Um, there's, there's. Or, I, the other two were. Hardware? License was not restricted to other hardware. So this maybe one, I'm the one who's confused. But in either case, both of those points are absolutely. So you can't say this <laughs> one you can you only use on this smartphone. Okay, and then this one says you can't, you can't say you can't use it on other smartphones. So it's kind of conveying the same message, but like removing the gray area. Okay. But all of that aside, what you said is absolutely correct. You cannot specify a license that only applies, like a license entity that only applies to one product entity. That makes sense. All right, so that's it for open hardware. You guys should grab pizza now. Move uh, uh, have some to the other table. Uh, so one last thing before we go to open source. Um, so licensing, like actually specific license for open hardware. Um, actually, OSI hasn't approved a single open hardware license. Despite, uh, yeah, yeah. Just presentation. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Um, the open source initiative hasn't approved a single open hardware license, so every license um, that's basically used in open hardware projects are derivative of the open uh, software licenses Colin was talking about. So, uh, for example, open cores uses uh, LGPL. Um, you can use a modified uh, license of BSD, which kind of applies to software. Uh, it just has they just tacked on a few more clauses. And uh, yeah, it's basically it. There aren't any open hardware licenses per se, so people just use modified open source uh, software licenses. So yeah, now on to open business models. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm Gordo. For those of you who don't know me, I did Arcos for two semesters before this fall, but before this semester, we're currently in fall and summer. Um, and I'm also president of Lib3, uh, which is an electronics and open hardware company in downtown Troy. Um, so anyways, open hardware business models. Um, there's a number of ways you can approach business models if you're trying to start an open hardware business. Um, you can offer services towards open hardware manufacturer. Um, you can actually provide manufacturing facilities and services to make open hardware for other open hardware designers. Um, you can manufacture proprietary hardware using open source components um, if you are able to get the licensing right. Um, you can dual license open source hardware that your company has created um, for use in enterprise applications, which is uh, the, uh, one of the points that I addressed in answer to a question. Um, and you can develop proprietary tools um, for open source hardware development. Um, so there's a whole lot of different ways you can get into this as a profitable business if you're a supporter of open hardware. Um, also, you can make partnerships with other open hardware businesses and other electronics businesses. Um, I'm sure at least a few of you have heard of Noco, and many of you have probably heard of SparkFun. Um, there's also companies like Seed Studio and 
super mad scientists and many, many other small open hardware shops and small like hobbyist electronic shops around the country that are either interested in open hardware or actively involved in the promotion of open hardware. Um, and forming partnerships with them in order to um, dual license products and create widgets and things like that can be a very interesting area. Um, you can also fund open source projects um, for complete documentation. Um, a lot of open hardware projects are being uh, done by people like yourselves and like us who <laughs> don't have a ton of resources for providing the um, materials for release that an open hardware project deserves. Um, the ideal open hardware project and the ideal open software project would be when you download it or when you get the files or it would have every possible design, every possible documentation file available. But for a lot of us that's not it's very difficult or not practical to produce. So providing assistance to people like that and building tools to help with documentation and things like that is very helpful to the community. Um, an example of an open hardware business model is Arduino. Obviously, or maybe some of you don't know, Arduino is open source hardware um, at its core. Um, what Arduino accomplishes this by selling um, their open hardware assembled in, as a unit. Um, so they design all the open hardware and they distribute it and you can build your own if you want or you can even build a million of them and try to sell them and compete with Arduino. But because Arduino has the name and the name is what they've copyrighted, um, the name is what they capitalize on, that name is not open source. Um, they, they're able to make, a, make quite a bit of money and continue their development using that money to stay ahead of their competition and continue making and promoting open hardware. I guess that's it. Yeah, that's um, um, I had my part. Okay, thank you.